All right, welcome back, everybody. It's me, Burrito, and we're doing the Imperial theme park because uh, as a double agent, we really need to figure out what the Imperials are up to or what have they been up to since uh, Vum has just wrecked their forces so much that she's just bored. So she's like, let me let me see what they're doing. So we're here on Naboo at the Emperor's Hidden Retreat here. Not a point of interest, but it is up here in the mountains. It's like West of the Imperial Gungan Battle. There's waypoints for it online. There's also a nice walkthrough in the SWG with Legends Wiki for the Imperial theme park, which I'm going to try not to use. If I get stuck, I'll use it. But for the most part, we're just going to be trying to figure out as we go. But I do know we need to speak to uh, somebody named Kaja. She's right there, so let's head on inside. Wow, she's right at the front door. Convenient. There is reason to believe that an officer in this retreat is selling information to the Rebel Alliance. Your assistance is required to help find and apprehend this traitor. I am ready to help. And we'll get Forest Camel. So you notice this structure is pretty similar to the Rebel theme park if you watched me do that before. We're going to be slowly uh, drip-fed armor, which you have three options. So there's the appropriate body types. Imperial Forest Camouflage, which will be a Scout Trooper armor set with camo on it. Ithor an Athorian outfit and a Kashyyyk outfit for Wookiees. We'll accept that. And also what Kaja said there at the end was to find and identify the traitor, you will investigate recent suspicious incidents. Check the requisitions terminal's logs and find out who procured a jamming device that was discovered on an ATST. Examine the terminals and guard towers for unauthorized access. Question the shuttle pilot about the person he saw tampering with the shuttle. Okay, so we gotta do that. Well, we're already outside, so is the shuttle pilot around here? No, I don't think so. I think they might be inside. Oh, no, this is this one counts. This is also the um, NPC you talk to if you're doing the Corellian Corvette before the Imperial side. That's why I'm like, is it the same guy? But it's true. Once we speak with him, he says, what brings you to the exclusive retreat at which you probably have no legitimate business? I'm not the person you saw tampering with the shuttle. Who? Oh, yes. Just the other day, I saw an officer tampering with the landing gear on the shuttle. He ran off when I called him, so I didn't get a good look. I did see his rank. He was an Imperial Major. All right, so we know we're looking for someone who's at least a rank Major. Let's go find, let's go check out the guard towers. And then we'll find the requisition terminal. What's up, Heel? You just recently got into SDBG and you got a question, what is the theme park you mentioned? So theme parks in Star Wars Galaxies are curated quest content that's themed around a certain area or faction. So the Imperial theme park is a set of quests designed for technically groups of like level 85 and up players. But if you're level 90 and have um, a certain level of gear, you could solo it. Uh, and basically, this is a set of quests found for uh, just Imperial players. Also, how does this tower work? There's this terminal that didn't find anything, and then there's just a broom here with no buttons. But yeah, so there's a few different theme parks in the game. There's Imperial, there's Rebel. There's also factionist ones, such as the, uh, which is a Dathomir theme park, which is themed around the Night Sisters and Singing Mountain Clan, respectively. There is also the uh, Jabba's theme park, which you would do if you're doing a legacy quest line. So there's a lot of different like theme parks to do. Another uh, well-known one is Nim's theme park, which I also did in this series. So yeah, just basically think of them as like collections of quests. Uh, they're usually targeted towards certain level groups. So like Nim's is targeted for like level 60 to level 70. Jabba's is like your teens, um, both the Rebel and Imperial are like 85 up, like I mentioned. Potentially you need a group. So. Okay, still haven't found anything. There's a lot of towers to click, though, so I guess I'll just keep clicking them. Yeah, the Legacy Quest can get uh, tiring at certain junctions. I would definitely say that Tatooine is not the worst. A lot of people have negative reviews of Naboo, which I would I would also agree that maybe Naboo's not the strongest. But I don't think it's also as bad as some people indicate. I think the fa my favorite part of the Legacy quest line was actually I think Corellia. If I had if I have to say which part of the Legacy was strongest, that'd be Corellia. It had while the overall plot was not good. There was attempts that were made to structure a narrative that was appropriate to somebody aligning neutral. And um, the locations were more interesting and they, it felt like there was more development there. 
which level which Corellia starts at like level 30 ish for the theme park. Uh, I would definitely say my least favorite was Rory, just because it was short, stupid, and just not fun. <laughs> just, just miserable. Yeah, it didn't last long, but it was terrible. If you get tired with Legacy, you don't have to continue it. There's a lot of different ways you can level. So, like, say you get to the end of, like... Tatooine and you're like, I really don't want to do this anymore. You can actually go to Kashyyyk and just start doing Kashyyyk stuff in Kachiro. Yeah, don't worry about rushing it. Take your time. Have fun. I think I might have to already look at the walkthrough for this because I don't... I feel like I've already investigated all the guard towers. Uh, what guard tower am I missing? <laughs> okay, so this is guard tower one. Oh, it's probably that guard tower nine. That's like way out there. I wasn't counting, but let's try nine. Yeah, luckily the legend staff have updated the rewards for the legacy quests, so they're a bit more rewarding now. So like doing uh, Tatooine legacy will get you a desert skiff. Um, the Bark Speeder, uh, once you get to Naboo, it'll also give you the ATRT. These are all pretty valuable items to have, so there's some incentive to do them. Because if you don't intend to use them yourself, they actually sell for an okay amount. Those used to be veteran rewards you'd claim using the claim window. Yeah, I think I missed this one. Hopefully this is the only one I missed. Okay, yeah, cool. I just missed tower number nine because it was way out here. What did I did I even discover anything from that? It didn't say anything. Nope. If I learned anything from the towers, it didn't tell me anything. I just went around and clicked on towers. Okay. Well, I said I was gonna try not to use the walkthrough, but uh Real talk, probably would not have found that tower. <laughs> Let's find the requisition terminal. It's probably inside. Yeah, I, I for this leveling journey, I got to ace pilot around... I did it between Naboo and Legacy, so I was like 40-something. And honestly, getting ace earlier was helpful. Not that you run into many obligatory space missions doing normal Legacy. You only run into one, and you don't even need to be an ace pilot to complete it. Do I need a... Oh, here we go. Here's the Imperial Re Equipment Requisition Terminal. It was in the same room as the Starship Terminals. There we go. Based on the information you have uncovered, we have identified a traitor, Major Barrett Hernard. You must go eliminate the spy. Go to his office and access his personal data terminal and that should get his attention. And apparently I didn't delete Guard Tower 2. Uh, I'm guessing his spy is back. His office is back this way? Hmm, that's not... I don't think this is his office. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hey, Darth Vader. So many doors that don't go anywhere. Oh, hey, I didn't know Admiral Thawne was just vibing here. Why did he turn a nod at me and didn't say anything? That's weird. Yet, um, in my experience, as long as you're using the uh, Entertainer Experience bonus, so... Um, Flush with success while you're leveling. It's pretty easy. Where the fuck is this guy's office? Am I a dingus? Why didn't they give me a waypoint to this? You have to treat me like I'm a baby. I was in this room. Yeah, maybe it is downstairs. This door wasn't open. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's downstairs. But uh, I never had a grind quest. Oh, this is an elevator door. I never had a grind quest during my entire time leveling this character, and I did this character to 90 only questing, and I documented the whole journey. Um, not only did I stream it, but it's also available on YouTube to watch. And it's cut up a bit, so you don't have to watch all the downtime of me driving anywhere. Oh no, uh, I'm not fully buffed. Uh, 
Hold on, I'm trying to remember how to play Spy. <laughs> I hate Ambo. Got him. Mm, action cost management, where'd you go? I should probably be running pups for this, but we'll turn them on later. This is fine. I'm out of action. The bane of the spy. I even did, redid my expertise to have more action cost saving. Dang, Cyclops, I didn't know you had this Imperial theme park game already on. Memory. Nice flex, thank you. I, I got a flex. Especially if I have an audience, you know. You got three shot by some level 30 Tuscans when you were level 18 on your way to a quest. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just drive around him. <laughs> Not great advice, but I get what you mean. It happens. Some areas of Tatooine will have higher level NPCs suddenly, so sometimes you just gotta circumvent them. Like, you know, if you're in the... When you're driving around the west side of Tatooine during the Legacy, you could run into a crate Dragon that's, like, level 85, so... We get the forest camo, because why not? Well, GCW points. Kaja says, we wish to track down Major Hernad's contacts there uh, here on Naboo using his codex. Our codes, please, please use signal communication rate to ask for help. From I'll handle it immediately. Message to say that you suspect your cover has been compromised and that you immediately need help escaping the planet. Then track and eliminate them. Gather any until you can. Okay. Where is this communications term? You kidding me, man? What did I say about treating me like a baby? I have a waypoint. I'm just gonna keep grabbing waypoints. I don't know why they don't give me one. Outside. Oh, it's my need to go around. Can I jump this wall with a jetpack? No. <laughs> Not that forgiving. Your flying thing is just way too much fun to worry about quests. Fair. There's definitely some planets I find more entertaining to explore than others. Like, Rory just doesn't feel like there's anything on it. Wow, we gotta go all the way down there. Okay. Well, here we go. So many fake doors. So many real fake doors. It's killing me. Yeah, a lot of advice you'll get from seasoned players is say just don't even do the legacy quests at all. Just go instant level to 90 and then figure out the game from there. But Star Wars Galaxy is like, uh, like a lot of MMOs. Um, if you skip that learning period, not only do you rob yourself of like l experiencing things at level for that character. So like doing the legacy at the appropriate level. But more importantly, uh, all of the just natural learning curves you run into. Luckily, the professions in Star Wars Galaxies, especially in this era of the game, they're not mechanically hard. Like, if you feel overwhelmed playing, like, Spy, for example, just reroll Commando. You've got literally five buttons to worry about as Commando. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's options to reduce mechanical difficulty. And then on top of that, you also have the community you can act as a resource like in the legends discord there's like a billion things pinned it as information a lot of people will miss those pins and then they'll ask a question then get redirected towards the pins <laughs> yeah Com commando is arguably the best profession to level as i would personally say it's the best to level as but some people like to say jedi my reasoning for commando is this is easier to gear uh, a non-force sensitive character than it is a force sensitive one because as a Jedi, you're stuck using, like, you know, whatever lightsaber is appropriate for level. And then also, Commando has way more AoE. Yeah, you can get Force... You have Force Run, you can get Force Cloak as a Jedi, which is handy. But unless you're trying to do stuff way under level, uh, you're never going to... You're going to never need Cloak. <laughs> Cloak's just good for, like, skipping challenges, not really overcoming them. But yeah, like, usually the advice that some people will give, which is what I agree with, is at least, like, for your first time returning, even if you know the game, you just still do, like, the normal leveling experience. Even if that just means you do Tatooine Legacy, do mission terminals until you can go do Nim's theme park, and then slam out uh, Mustafar. 
that's fine, but at least you still leveled and you still have, like, you you remember how some things work. But I've had a lot of people who've come into the stream who've gone, hey, I just used this thing that made me level 90 instantly, and I don't know what to do, and I just have my starter... I just have my starter Jedi cloak, uh, question mark, you know. And that even happens to returning players. Like, when I came back to the game, I did forget how some things work, because it was years at that point. And while I remembered a lot of things, it wasn't all applicable, especially on Legends, because... The community is smaller, and some changes that they've made to the game on Legends do tweak some of the things that you're going to want to be doing. Or how you approach certain situations. Like, a very niche thing is farming Death Watch Bunker as a spy for liquids for your Mandalorian armor is not useful anymore. Like, the way they increase their cloak detection and fixed... Increase their camo detection threshold and how they detect camo. Hey, camo's useless in there. Like, I went in there with 700 camo as a spy, and they still instant find me. So... It's really just, if you're going to solo grind it, you better gear up a Jedi. And... <laughs> but even then, I don't even recommend doing that. There's way other... You can earn credits faster doing something else and then just buy the liquids. <laughs> or Mandalorian armor, then grind it out yourself. You never played the alleged gameplay for the first time this week? Oh, welcome aboard. I hope you enjoy the different speed that it is. That's level 90, but you throw on command to explore and see the game. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's a really good thing to do is setting goals. Like, when you're like, hey, I see that I can fly the Nibuian N1. I want to go fly that. That's a per that's the best way to play a sandbox MMO like Star Wars Galaxies. Is just find, like, and set your own goals and do it. That's how I play. So right now, my goal has been to experience as much quest content and share that with people as I can. Because there's some quest content that only I knew about, like, among my friends that they didn't even know was a thing, and I'm like, oh, I want to make sure people see this. And conversely, there's quests that I found that I never knew existed before, personally. Whether those quests were, were, were useful or not is another argument, but... Alright, but we're here. I gotta eliminate some rebels. So, uh, let's... Let's go ambush some rebels. Sorry, guys. You're You're still my best friends, but I gotta... I gotta do this Imperial side of the content. You have lots of experience in MMOs. You play EVE Online, Ultimate Online, and you don't know how many others. Okay, well, <laughs> with Ultimate Online, you're already ahead of the game, considering the devs who worked on Star Wars Galaxies originally, a lot of them came from Ultimate Online. Man, I really do miss my officer build right now, just for the fact that I never had to think about my action. <laughs> Having to, like, stop after every few fights to get my action back. Man, <laughs> I feel so gimped now after so much solo officer questing at 90. I will say that the uh, stealth camo approach on a, in, a, in the swamps of Naboo does feel right, though. Invisibly swimming through water to ambush people. So I feel like the aesthetics are down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think I bit off too much. <laughs> oh, no. Anyways... Wow, I waited for the very last second to do that. <laughs> well, you all know I love cutting it close here. Yeah, we're, so we decoyed out of that because I was a little... Uh, I somehow got their attention much more than I wanted to. But that's okay. We not only have decoy to escape combat, but I also got smoke grenade. And I redid my expertise from last time. So I did drop the uh, strike through line, which I don't recommend doing. If you're going to be doing group content, you want to keep this. Even for a lot of solo builds, you still want this. This is really good. But since I'm mostly questing right now, I picked up Rapid Concealment so I can camo more often. And I picked up Ursa Shadows so I could get through areas faster. Um, I also put another extra point into weapon melee weapon action cost reduction. Because obviously I need as much action cost reduction as I can get in a solo spy situation. I could whip out a weapon rifle. Yeah, that's probably what I should do, huh? The hope here was to pull fewer enemies. And then, of course, they all swim into the water where I can't go out and do anything about them. You get the problem that you forgot about using your any abilities in fights. They're not going to press a button to attack a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Commando is, um... About half your damage just comes from auto-attacking when you're running a heavy weapons build, which is the recommended build to run. So, <laughs> even if you forget, it's like, eh. Not the end of the world. This guy's next to us, so let's put our door uh, back on. But this is something you'll get used to while leveling. One mind-numbing thing about the way I leveled Officer was I only had two 
uh, offensive special abilities until like, what was it, level 38 or some BS? It was like a miserably long amount of time. <laughs> I could have got some other ones sooner, but I went for buffs instead, which was probably the meta better choice, but damn, having literally only two specials for that long was pretty much pretty miserable. <laughs> they saw me right before I was about to camo. Luckily, Spy's got a lot of big upfront up dumpster damage. All right, let's get the let's get the rebel data and get out of here. Sorry, guys. You have no idea how you're gonna play on ground, really. You guess you just figure out what you like. Oh yeah, and even then, I know plenty of people who don't even touch the ground game. Um, some people just only play the space sim aspect and nothing else. So even if you find yourself not really enjoying the ground game, but you like space. There's always that option, too. You don't have to do the ground game. The only thing that you would want to do from the ground game, regardless, is probably um, get the Corellian Freighter. So you have more instant travel options. It's an, it's called the G9 Corellian Rigger Freighter. And unless you store three locations anywhere in the galaxy where an instant travel vehicle can be called, and you can use it to, like... Go back to your house, go back to your harvesters if you're harvesting anything. Go to, you know, your favorite point of interest. Like, I just used one to get to Emperor's Retreat really fast. Found a level 40 ace of aces in the starport. Oh, yeah, they exist. And that person's only level 40 because I think 40 or around 40 is the optimal level to hand sample at. So the only thing they use that character for is flying space and hand sampling resources, probably on Mustafar. All right, so here's Kaja. Take that. She says, well done with the traitor. Her not Haran eliminating his contacts removed. You have helped to make Naboo safer for the Empire. Oh, but before you go, Inquisitor Reg would like a word with you. I don't like it when an Inquisitor's like, I want to talk to you. Uh, I'd be like, mm, nah, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go now. Why are there so many Inquisitor pilot trainers? That seems weird. <laughs> I mean, I know there's Inquisitors that fly starships. You see them in space. Oh, wait, here he is. I just didn't read his last name. All right, here's Inquisitor Lom Reg. He says, good Kaja sent you. I need a Force-sensitive apprehended, and the name is Zalbar Javun. Yes, sir. Last known location was on Endor, reportedly near the Marauder Stronghold. I suggest you leave it once. Okay. We're going to find a Force-sensitive Twi'lek. We have to ap apprehend him and search his camp. I'm going to take a little shortcut to get there, speaking of instant travel, because I am not driving out to the Marauder Stronghold. For those of you who know where the Marauder Stronghold is on Endor, you know it's basically in the southwest southwest corner of the map. I think it's at least like six or 7,000 meters away from the closest starport. So we're going to we're gonna go to Koth, and we're going to take a AT-AT head there. Because I already know that they have one, because I think I used it once for some creature taming. That or I was crazy and I drove out there. I got turned around. Uh... Oh wait, there it is. Share with the Death Watch bunker run. How many at, -AT are there? Uh, I don't know. A lot. There's one dude who's been advertising the Discord that he started a travel center that has... Um, doesn't even give you a waypoint. I'm just going to grab a waypoint. Uh, he has at least 70, because he has 140 lo stored locations. I haven't went and looked at his yet. Alright, so we're here at Endor. I'm at near the Marauder Stronghold, which you can find as a point of interest. I just went down here. Speaking of theme parks, I don't believe the Marauder's theme park works on Legends yet. That was a piece of- that's a really old piece of content. I don't think it was ever updated. Alright, let's make sure we're buffed up. I feel like I'm forgetting something. All right, I was taking the crash and burn for the memes. Yeah, Viptus. It's something like that. I forgot he was a force sensitive. I'm like, oh, he has a lightsaber. <laughs> He's gone. Let's take his data pad. It's, like I said, talk to him. Just stabbed him in the gut. As suspected, some rebels have been hiding Zalbar, but now we know where to find them. Go to lock and eliminate them. Wait, rebels on lock were hiding a guy on Endor? Okay, I guess they were covering for him. 
Off to lock. The travel center I went to, Koth Baba, is probably probably the most popular one on the server. There's definitely a few other ones, like there's one in New Capital City. My city has one, but it's like really small because I was like, I'll just make my own travel center that links up to all the other travel centers. <laughs> so I only have to buy like five ATAT -AT heads. Way easier. Travel centers are cool, but I don't think we need like a billion of them. Ah, uh, yes, I'm on the starport. Oh, they're over there. I have a fast way to get there. Speaking of my ATAT -AT head travel center, I actually have an ATAT -AT head that takes me out there. <laughs> I like having ATAT -AT heads set up to cities that either don't have a shuttle port or link up to other city travel stations. And the lock city that we link up to is one that I found when I was just out creature taming. I can't get in my house because of the temp combat flag. If a speeder gets disabled, can it be repaired and how? Yes. So if you open your world map, you can see that there's a option called parking garage. Any of these parking garages you can go to to repair your vehicle. So I actually have one here. But if I summon a vehicle like my ATRT, if you're close enough to parking garage and open the radio menu, you'll see a repair vehicle option. If the vehicle is not disabled, you can repair it. If the vehicle is disabled, it depends on the vehicle. So for example, if you disable uh, your swoop bike, so if you bought a deed for a swoop bike, you can't repair it. You'd have to get a vehicle restoration kit from a crafter, which those run more than 100,000 credits when a swoop bike deed is like 2,000 credits. So in that case, I'd say you delete your swoop bike and just buy another one. But if you disable, say, your desert skiff that you get from the Tatooine Legacy, this, this one, that you do need a vehicle restoration kit and I would go recommend buying it because the Devil's Desert Skiffs are limited and they're very useful. They have a uh, lava protection on them. Not every vehicle does. So this you can drive around boost far without it. But yeah, if you once you get a vehicle restoration kit, you can go to a parking garage. There's like two in Moss Eisley. There's one by the Lucky Despot and there's one near the Cantina. And then you could just take it out. And then as long as you have the restoration kit in your inventory, you could apply it to your vehicle. Um, and again, if your vehicle doesn't need one, like if a jetpack gets disabled, like my jetpack, I can just go to a vehicle station and repair it without cost. Uh, the, ve the ones that take restoration kits are listed on the Legends Wiki under the vehicle page, because there's a mount page, but mount talks about all mounts. It's the vehicle page that talks about vehicles. I also talk about it in my vehicle guide on YouTube. Or I talk about I talk about every travel option. I talk about repairing vehicles with and without a restoration kit and enhancing vehicle speeds. Uh, it's locked. <laughs> I'm like, wait, where am I going? Yeah, so this was obviously way faster than driving out here. <laughs> the closest city with a shuttle port was Mercenary Retreat, which wasn't too far, but right, so we have to destroy the rebel camp, defeat the rebel commander and destroy their supplies, which the walkthrough does have a waypoint to for the supplies. Even though I have to destroy six. Okay. I'm a spy. Let's do spy. Let's see if my, um, how much camo do I have right now? 390. Let's see if my 390 camo can uh, carry me through this. Just for immersion. So I'm doing espionage. Please ignore the cute bull running behind me galloping. <laughs> That's certainly not a giveaway. Creative supplies. I can't perform this while hitting. I'm going to have to assassinate the car. <laughs> this is the extent of my roleplay, everybody. This is the best you're going to get. I'm not much of an RP here. Again, I will um, facilitate RPs, and I'm not going to knock it if you're doing it, but it's not usually my go-to. I do tabletop roleplay, but I've never really been able to get into video game-oriented roleplay. There's another one right here. speed bike got disabled the other day you just delete it but it sounds like that was our decision yeah unless it's like a rare speeder bike i wouldn't mind it so like if it was the speeder bike you got from wado you could totally just go buy another one off the bazaar it only costs you like five thousand credits tops Ooh, i pissed off way too many here it's okay we're badass though we have plot armor in the form of our decoy it was the 5k one you got from the bazaar. Yeah, it, and if you do vendor location search on the bazaar, it's that tab at the top. You could totally just 
You can totally get one for like even cheaper than that. You can buy crates of swoop bike deeds. That's the old PvP strat. So if, like if you're doing PvP and your swoop bike gets disabled, just delete it and generate a new one. You can buy a crate of deeds for like twenty five thousand credits and just have twenty five swoop bike deeds in your back pocket. The reason uh, speeders are so cheap is generally their quality doesn't matter. The quality of one does determine their health pool, but that can be upgraded with a vehicle customization kit if you really care about that. And also, they, they bikes don't decay, so you don't have to maintain that. So you, they're just churned out using a bunch of junk seal, typically. The reason I'm killing these guys is that just clicking the crate and leaving is because they are very aggressive towards me due to my factional alignment, and they're just going to try and attack me anyways, and the crate's a channel, so I can only get away with so much. See, this is why, I like, when people ask me to spy a good solo class, I'm like, yeah, because if you get in trouble, you can just cloak out. <laughs> Worst case scenario, you just leave a fight. You know what I mean? Like, see, this guy saw me through the door, but that's okay, I got some of my resources back. Interestingly, I thought I was going to feel tankier than my officer with this setup, but I don't. But that means because I'm sacrificing stats for camo, specifically constitution, so I do have a lower health pool. I could run a different food, like Breath of Heaven, which I probably should switch to, considering this is getting a little tight on some of these fights. Uh, I haven't seen them do a bleed or a poison, so I don't think my other food's going to help. Like, what's my... Yeah, I have 1221 KHP is not bad, but that's being floated by a my biofocus crystal surprise see i'm really good at killing like one thing and then after that shruggies all right let's leave versus shadows time yeah this is why we picked it up versus shadows is not as fast as force run or powered assisted sprint based on my tests but it's still extremely fast and use it while cloaked so you know <laughs> That's a perk. I mean, it might be comparable to Power Assist's Sprint. Power Assist's Sprint for Bounty Hunter is way faster than I thought it was before I actually tested it. All right, we're back with Lom. He says, you're back. An adequate job. Was Zalbar one of my couriers has gone missing? Find him. Yes, sir. He was to meet Rogan Fell in the Bella Vistal on Corellia. Start there. Oh, we're familiar with uh, Bella Vistal. Let's head out there. All right, so we're here. We are in Bella Vistal. We gotta find the courier's contact, which the journal just says. Rogan, just find Rogan Fell. I don't know why the Imperial theme park specifically is allergic to giving me waypoints. Apparently, he's staying next to Shuttleport B, and I went to Shuttleport A. So he's on the other side of the city. Thanks. Walk through. I guess I'll just go to the other one. Here's Rogan Fell, right next to the Shuttleport B. He says, you're the one Inquisitor Loam set. Finally, the courier's gone into hiding. He won't explain why, but I know where he is. I'll be you talk some sense into him. And gives me a waypoint to just right over there. Okay. Here's the Imperial Courier. He says, Inquisitor Loam set you. There's nothing I could do. They came out of nowhere and took the missive. There were too many. Wait, I know you can go take care of them. Teach them the lesson about messing with the Imperial Courier. That's my only hope. You don't look like an Imperial Courier. Maybe he's, like, subcontracted. I don't know why you're in, like, Chitin, but whatever. Holy shit. <laughs> I didn't see... I just saw how far away the waypoint is. Uh, okay. You know what's probably faster than this? City waypoint. Because <laughs> I probably... I'm, like, probably going to be looking to, like, forever to place my ITV down. So, let's just city waypoint. Wow, that put me way above in the sky for a second. Outside New Westport. Apparently there's a recommended strategy of going on leave before coming here, but we'll do this the hard way. Also, I haven't been here since the city update. Wow, they put a lot of effort into decorating this place. Wow, nice work. Oh, they're even using some of the decorative buildings. Our city doesn't really have room for these. Not because of existing player structures, but the terrain is just like, nope. Too hilly, and then just doesn't let me. <laughs> Some of these are kind of sunk into the ground. Uh, subsidence. It's land subsidence. 
All right, so we have to defeat the Rebel Commander, eliminate Rebel troops, defeat the Greystone's Bandit leader, and defeat Bandits. So the walkthrough saying defeat Bandits and then flag up to defeat the Rebels. We're just going to just gonna go in. I should be fine. Really glad about knowing about leave now after you got blasted every corner of Mos Yeah, it's a good lesson to learn, especially before you go to Thede, because Thede always has Imperial troops uh, that are like level that are like above level 90 and are elites. So if you're a rebel uh, on active duty trying to do legacy quests in Thede, yeah, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> All right, let's just. This is gonna suck. I'm gonna think even about. I should probably be using my carbine for this. Just keep going. See, I could fart bomb, but I think the range of the spice poison cloud is deceptive. I feel like it hits a little bit further than I think it does. It's not as big as the medics, but. Just my level 10 jet, I got the full order 66 experience. Well, F. Think of it as like you you just got canonized, basically. That's your uh that was your galaxy's hazing, as designed by the game system. I have definitely, especially starting out on live, there was a lot of situations where I just got pants because I like, you know, I didn't know entertainer buffs were a thing when I started. So, like, I'd be out doing stuff, and then I'm like, why am I dying so much? And it's just like, well, you didn't get any buffs. So I was like, oh. Or another common thing I see is people will quest with an entertainer buff, but not um, medic buffs. And I'm like, just go, in the, just go in this med center and grab them. They're so powerful. Wow, these, these gravestone leaders just don't care, huh? Should I try and pickpocket them? Careful reaching your pocket, but I only grass bear. He, he's poor. I didn't need to kill both of them, but hey, man, they came after me. All right, let's take out. We have to take out three more troopers and four more bandits. So let's do that. Guess I'll just go this way. We'll just go counterclockwise, because why not? I'm waiting for some action to come back again. Did I poison those guys? No, nope, they just saw me. I don't know. I feel like when I use the fart cloud, they just want to attack me more. <laughs> They're like, hey, someone's farting over there. Go get them. Friggin' rude. Granted, it is a bioweapon. Not that the Empire is above using bioweapons. I guess this is in character, and I guess according to the Secrets of the Siren, Siren quest line, the Rebels were at least trying to use Spice's combat stimulants, so <laughs> there was that little lord dump, I guess. Think of a fart cloud, it's kind of understandable to beat up the guy who let it loose. True. I like to call the spy cloud the fart cloud and the medic cloud the piss cloud because the spice cloud is like really dark brown greenish and the medics cloud is this very yellowy pissy and it's also easy different the medic cloud's much larger than the spy cloud so like if i drop nerve gas right there for medic it definitely would have hit those guys those guys didn't actually get hit by my toxic cloud was that thing what it's called venomous ploy they just saw me in combat and it was like get them all right we got them He's got to get two more bandits now. Which reminds me, I think it's still in spawn. There's a pretty good gas in spawn. Just high overall quality gas. Useful for a lot of shipwright crafting. So if any shipwrights need some gas or you just need some high OQ gas. I think it's still in spawn. Cyclops alerted me to the presence of much gas inside the player city that I'm in. And I was like, wow. I could get so much gas and I only have to leave my presence in my city. Okay, we, uh... Finish that, so let's go back to Loam. The city's 90% full of gas. Checks out. I I already have so much high overall quality gas. I looked at what it was useful for, and I'm like, I'm already loaded on this. I don't need to harvest more. <laughs> if I did, like, shipwright crafting, sure. Because it's useful for a lot of uh, ship components, but... Empty your harvesters. Yeah, the last thing I harvested, I totally forgot to empty my harvesters on it. <laughs> But it was okay, because the resource died before they filled. I just like, oh, it's been like four days and I've emptied those harvesters. Oh, it died a while ago. It's, it's fine. All right, we're back with Loam. He says, I like those who get things done. And without questioning their orders. Well, I didn't have an option to question you, so. Keep it up, you might amount to something. Speaking of which, Lord Hethrier needs has need of you. Report at once. All right, here's Lord Hethrier. He's kind of... Does he have jaundice? 
is is that imperial medical is the imperial medical benefits not looking well for you dude <laughs> anyways he says what kept you sorry that the walk was a whole 10 seconds over here my guy the information retrieved by Inquisitor Loam Reg has details about various rebels operations. You are to thwart them in. Yes, sir. The rebels are planning an attack on one of our bases on Talus. Go defend the base. Okay. Let's go. Are you poking at you? poking at my gear just made fun of me finally buy 35s? Uh the best way to get people to do anything that helps them is to peer pressure them. <laughs> I'm glad you finally invested. Your holonet runs will be much better just by having gear. Oh, I just have to go to the Imperial outpost. Would have been faster just to start for here or whatever. Oh, I know what they're doing. First responder set is in the budget and you could probably grind it before they add that money. Yeah, tokens aren't too bad. How do you get launchers for your ship? There are none on the market. I'll show you. So if you go over to the bazaar terminal, you're looking for missile launchers, right? Like Mark II or something. If you go over to the Bizarre Terminal, we go to all auctions, and if we go to ship component and we go to missile launcher, you're right, there are none. But if we see up here at the top, you'll see there's these five buttons. All auctions, my bids, my sales, available items, and vendor locations. Click vendor location. And then in the location filter right below it, click entire galaxy. And then under the ship component category, then you can do missile launcher and then you'll see them and so what's different about the bazaar is on the bazaar you go to auctions you can buy an auction uh, buy an item bid on it and then you go to that bizarre location usually Isley, and pick it up these are items listed on player vendors throughout the galaxy so, so let's say i wanted to buy this mark three concussion launcher i say oh yeah that looks pretty good instead of clicking buy you see there's no buy button in this window or in this window you click the create waypoint button so I click that, and then if I open my data pad, which is K by default, and go to the waypoints tab, you now see I have a waypoint to vendor item, cost 85,000 credits, and this is the name of the item, which in this case is the Mark III Concussion Launcher. And then you would go to Talus, you'd activate the waypoint, or look at the roadmap and activate it, and then you'd go to that city, go to the vendor it's on and buy it. The reason players use vendors other than disappearances is it lets them list more items in the bazaar and lets them list at higher prices and they don't have to pay listing fees. Player vendors can only be created by traders. Oh yeah, no. Most of the best pilot stuff is listed on vendors. So let's see if I can show you a really good example really fast. So on all auctions, if I do chassis, is anyone showing its chassis? Yeah, this person's selling a Y-Wing for 29,000 credit, 30,000 credits basically, which is... Um, 151k mass. Well, let's just go to vendor location. I'll filter chassis to Y wing. And then let's just filter to 30,000 cap. And then we can see, oh yeah, here they are here. And he's selling it for even cheaper here. Same vendor layer. 151k. And then there's even advanced features that help with space. So, like, if you are using this window down here at the bottom near item name filters, this enable item attribute filter. Now I can just say, oh, you know what? I want as much mass on that Y wing as possible. So let me do enable and and I enable item attribute, and let's do maximum total mass, and let's say it needs to be at least uh, 152,000 mass. And I don't care about the max value. Item must have attribute add. Refresh and now it's only giving me Y wing chassis with a with some with the maths that's over 152,000. So this one's got 153, 152, and then you get to filter like that. Which obviously for ships you want the highest mass total so you can fit the biggest parts in there. Like, but here's 153,000 or 152,000 for 60k, etc. Yeah, you're going to be using the Bazaar a lot if you get into flight, because you're going to be filtering for ship components of certain quality and mass sizes and whatnot. Never settle for less mass, man. Yeah, if it's a ship that you don't really intend to build out, and you're just using it for leveling, like, for example, if you're leveling neutral pilot, 
if you get a Dune Lizard that's like a few thousand K off cap mass, you'll probably be fine. You'll probably be never pushing the limit on it anyways. But if you are trying to build out like best mass possible, yeah, don't compromise. Mass is way more valuable than chassis hit points. Because ideally you don't let yourself get into a situation where you need to wor worry about your chassis taking HP damage. Okay, so we, here we are at the Talus Imperial uh, Military Outpost, uh, and we gotta stop these rebels from invading. We have to defeat one commando and 14 attackers. Let's see if we can get rid of the commando first. I don't know where the hell he is. Oh, there he is. Let's take care of our spy assassination mission. Seems like my camo rating's doing okay, so... Later, suckers. Assassinate and leave. Hit and fade tactics. Some real spy bullshit going on right now. The starships get limited. Yeah, it depends on your piloting profession. But, um... Like, the Dune Lizard has a pretty good uh, starter mass. So does the uh, Y-Wing. But, like, I know some of the Imperial ships used to have be really limited, like the starter TIE Fighters. But I know Legends move those around to make certain uh, Imperial ships a little, available a little bit sooner. Starting Imperial is rough. You have, like, the hardest piloting missions overall from any of the three trainer options. And you have, like, the worst starting ships. But, like I said, they adjusted which starter ships are available, which has made it a little bit nicer to start Imperial pilot. Not that I would know. <laughs> I only roll Rebel into neutral. Uh, I like the neutral ships. That's my answer for why I like neutral. Yeah, a lot of the starter Imperial ships don't have a lot of room. Once you get up to the mid-sized ships, you'll get a lot more space. The Y-Wing on Tatooine. Yes, it's... Yeah, so the starter ships, the Z-95, the starter TIE, and the uh, sick light fighter, you can't put anything in those suckers. Like, they fit the prototype parts they come with, and you can maybe fit, like, a tiny bit of, uh, like, upgrade in them, but... The starter ships, you're not really meant to change. Like, you can't even fit a... Like, you can't even use droid commands, so there's no reason to put, like, a flight computer in it, for example. But you can't use droid commands until you gain a few levels. It's still whack that the tutorial on... Ta it's They should have allowed players to use droid flight commands sooner, at least basic ones. They're so crucial for space, and they don't tutorialize that at all. Like, leveling is so much harder without a flight computer if you don't set one up. You do have an R4 unit in your X-Wing. Yeah, the astromech slash flight computers and the droid commands are really important. But yeah, like I said, you don't learn a droid command until the fifth box. And which is only level two, so you can't fit big programs in them. I leveled Ace without using a flight computer, but I had to bring in my other Aces to help on, like, two missions. But if I had a flight computer, I could have totally done them. I was just being lazy. <laughs> For this character. You know why my constitution is worse than it is? It's because I'm still I'm running the Heroism set. I was too much of a cheapo to buy a spy set. Because <laughs> I don't intend to stay spy forever, so I was like, I'll just run the Heroism set. It's fine. Boom, baby. All right, we get contacted by, contacted by John Disman. He says, A Salonian advocate from the Corellian Tribunal has been spying for the rebels and aiding them with acts of terrorism throughout the Corellia system. She must be eliminated and the rebels must be blamed. Get C to it. Do I have to go back to Corellia? Find a rebel helmet from one of the rebel camps near Nashaw. Okay, we gotta go to Nasho. Oh, is this the reverse of the other quest? Because in the other quest, so in the Rebel theme park, you do a quest to reverse. The Imperials trying to flame us for assassinating a Salonian. In this one, are we trying? We're the ones setting up the framing. That's really funny. Why don't we just buy a Rebel helmet off the bazaar? <laughs> I didn't realize Nashville had so many high-level Rebels just walking around. 
Yeah, once you when you're running droid commands like uh, reinf like increasing your reactor loads, so then you can like heavy load shields to have more uh, shield health or recharge shields using enhanced weapon capacitors. Space gets much more manageable, but without droid commands, yeah, some missions are really rough. But that's the thing, though. Like I said, they don't tutorialize like loading a loading a um, loading a ship with any of those commands. They don't do any of that. And I'm like, why? <laughs> That's such an important part. You have to resort to player guides. And a lot of the time, the player guides don't even tell you, like, uh, how to do it for commands appropriate to your level. They just tell you how to set up a computer for, like, level, like, for Ace. Because the amount of uh, room you have to program droid commands depends on your level or your piloting progression. So, doing a lower level computer, you have less memory, so you have to play with it a little bit more than if you're Ace. Alright, so we're assassinating the... Thelonian, and we did that. Uh, we gotta go to the Imperial Operative now. I think I can answer me my stream, honestly. <laughs> I'm glad my space stream was, uh, useful. I know my space stream was kind of like, yeah, commands exist, Here, here's what I use. Uh, I'm not going to program an appropriate level computer, though, because honestly, I just didn't want to. <laughs> the Imperial Operative says, It's a Slonian handled good. Give me the helmet, and I'll see you to the rest. I will leave the area if I was you. Gotta go back to Lord Heather. In hindsight, I probably should have taken the time to program an at-level Jory computer so I could demonstrate it to everybody, but... I just never bothered before. I just kind of like brute force myself through this quest, but I usually do the easier flight trainers. <laughs> so have a little bit of privilege there. You bought a droid with some commands in that you activated and haven't touched that part since. Yeah, so like when you're in your ship, if you open, if you hit escape or open your main menu here and go to commands, I don't have this here, but because I'm on the ground, there will be like an astromech page or droid command page and you can click and move those onto your bars. And then you can activate those. And then so if you have reactor overload, do that first. If you do them in the wrong order, you're going to damage your ship. <laughs> reactor always goes first. There's a lot of droid commands in the game, most of which I never touch. But there's some really useful ones like emergency shield overload or heavy or extreme like overloads to give yourself like a ton of shield either in the front or rear. Granted, make the other side more vulnerable. But like generally for like pvp you want heavy front shields because you're more likely to get shot in the front uh dueling somebody and then in pve you're more likely to get shot in the back so some people wait that way it's a little bit riskier but if you know what you're doing it's not too bad i definitely wouldn't recommend doing that as a start once you're used to flying for whatever type of content you're doing then you can start doing those like extreme loads the heavy load shield strats the stuff the basic stuff's like a reactor overload Engine overload, weapon capacitor, or weapon overload, and then weapon capacitor overload, and then shield reinforcements, and shunts. That's like all the basic stuff. All right, here's uh, Lord Hethrier. He says, your actions are true to Empire. I have mentioned you to others, and Grand Admiral Thrawn has requested your services. I consented. See to him. I am not going to do a Thrawn impersonation. I just can't. Also, we got the Imperial... Medallion of service. No stats, just kind of a basic item, so whatever. Here's Grand Admiral Thrawn who's pointing at something, and he's with General Veers, who's also pointing at something. I've learned of a manufacturing shop where Rebel Starships are being repaired. This is a golden opportunity. What do you need me to do? If we can find out where their ships are being delivered, we can tag them and track the starships to bigger rebel bases or even to some of their tar uh, larger ships. Very straight to the point, Thrawn. Okay, we gotta go to Corvella on Corellia. Okay. I can just use the starship terminal in the base. That'd be the big part. You may be part of a faction, alliance, or empire and still do neutral pilot stuff. Yes. So I'm Imperial right now, but I am actually a uh, privateer pilot. I fly for the Corellian Corsac uh, on this character, but you could also fly um, sm uh, Smuggler's Alliance, which leans Rebel, 
or Royal Security Forces, which leaves Imperial without having to be declared for that faction. So you can do either. If you want to fly Imperial, you have to have at least 200 Imperial faction points. Same if you're Rebel. If you want to fly Rebel, you have to have at least 200 uh, Rebel faction points. But if you want to fly Neutral, it doesn't matter what your declared faction is. Just be aware that as a neutral pilot, everyone's going to want to shoot you in space. <laughs> no one's really going to like you. You're flying Royal Security Force on your commando, yeah. I've never done RSF. I've done Smuggler's Alliance mostly. I have done Corellian Corsac on this character. And then I, um, I've i done only, I think, Havoc Squadron as a rebel pilot. Yo, why are they allergic to giving me waypoints? It's like, search their offices in Corvella. There's like a billion buildings here, dude. You just ran past you at the starport? Whoa! That happens all the time in game for me. I just pass right by people. Okay, I'm looking for... Bottom of the bunker and a database server. Okay. I'm glad that your best run's going well so far. I hope you make it very far. We're just doing a little infiltration here. Can't prefer this action while I hit him. Guess I'm gonna have to take him out. Give me your data. All right, we gotta go defeat their base commander. Oh wow, they're based out in the Argolat Swamp. Um, do I actually know? Yeah, I think I know. How far am I? 4,000 meters. Yeah, we should probably go to a travel station. That's a bit far. You need to try running Bespin Quest. Never attempted. Well, after I finish Imperial Theme Park, I am going to do Imperial Bespin. So you've seen me do Rebel Bespin, so you can expect, you know what to expect there. I'm sure Imperial Bespin is a similar challenge. We got to defeat the base commander and track their starships. I can't pick a place to distract tracking device while cloaked. Am I too far away? I think it's because I'm cloaked. Yeah, I can't prefer this action while hitting. Thanks for gifting a sub to expose nipples. <laughs> oh god, this is bad, everybody. I need to, like, leave. Bye. You had a real hard time with this mission? Yeah, I could see why. There are definitely hard points in the Rebel theme park as well. Uh, like when you go to the base in... Duaba. But this is a pretty high-density area. I'm going to have to, like, take them out slowly, but fast enough to beat their spawn timers. See if I can get away with this one. Okay, that's one. Didn't mean to start track planning a tracking device, but somehow I did it during combat. Does only the start of combat prevent you from channeling this? Question mark. I will say that um, while I didn't really think the idea of leveling with a spy would be very fun, even though I know I had some friends advocating for it, uh, just because, like, as you can tell, spy doesn't really have any AoE other than a cloud and then a trap you can unlock that just does a snare, I think. So the AoE's not great. Movement speed's not bad and cloak's fun, but the more enemies you skip, the less XP you get, which in hindsight, I got level 80 during... I hit level 90 during a level 60 quest, so clearly XP wasn't a problem for me. Who the fuck? Sir, where did you even come from? This is kind of entertaining, though, because I feel like playing spy... Since we're going around sabotaging rebels, spy feels very thematic for this quest line, at least. It's also kind of fun being like, go kill the commanders, and I just cloak by all the dudes to start with killing the commander first. Does give you some like assassination vibes at least. You can take out your anger on some space. You're gonna go out and do that now. What are you gonna do in space? Uh, is it the GCW invasion starting soon? Yeah, daylight savings. So I think they happen at um 
think they happen at a odd number of hours now. Where's the commander? He's probably in the building if I don't see him. I had a 50-50. He's either going to be in this building or up that tower. Oh, this is bigger than I thought it was on the inside. I have never, ever, ever, ever seen the facade, that bunker facade, lead into a larger complex. I don't know if we've even seen these textures before. What? This is a thing? What? <laughs> I've literally played this game for years, and I know I said I did the Imperial Dean Bark Alive, but clearly I don't remember anything. I don't remember ever. Like, these doors are obviously, like, the same they use in the Old Republic facility bunker on Mustafar, but, like, I don't remember this at all. Wild. Surprise! Hidden fate. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to Thrawn. Alright, we're back with Thrawn. Let's see what he's got for us this time. Good, there's no time to lose. An Imperial transport was shot down on Rory. Go investigate the crash site and recover what you can. Rory, I'm on my way. Waste no time. Do not let any of the important documents fall into rebel hands. I'm off to Rory. Can I city waypoint from here? Well, no, it doesn't matter. I want to go use the Starship Terminal anyways. How do I like the city update? I think overall the city update is a positive add to the game. Personally, I don't think there's any drawbacks. Um, I do have the privilege, though, of being a mayor of a rank 5 city at the moment, and we were rank 4 when the update came out, so I did have access to basically most of the expertise points, having 20 and now having 30. So that is speaking from some position of privilege. There are some things that I would critique with it regarding the expertise tree itself, which I that's what the, that's the next YouTube video I'm working on. It's just the script has gotten way longer than I planned. It's probably going to be my longest scripted video on the channel so far. Um, longer than any of the any of the other guides I did. So I'm going to share my opinions in detail there, but some of the city expertise boxes are um, useless. There are actually more useless ones than I thought there were. <laughs> Specifically, the longer officer stims aren't helpful. Obviously, the clone, the cloning sickness duration is not useful. And uh, the smuggler prestige one's actually almost useless. There's one situation it's useful, but for the most part, it's useless. And that's mostly in the resident tree. I also don't like some of the prerequisite requirements specifically. I don't know why the uh, increased factory speed is locked behind city decoration, city maintenance reduction, and the increased protected citizen count. I don't know. It's such a It's a good ability in a bad spot. What's broken about the storyteller extension? This is, this is not working as intended. Because the I found the uh, factory power decrease isn't working at all. This like there's a box that gives seventy percent um, energy decrease. It doesn't do anything. I haven't checked in in a week since I reported it, so I don't know if I got like stealth patched or what. But it just wasn't doing anything. It's now working. Okay, that's good at least. What's up, Ryan? Oh, it's just not working. Got it. All right, here we are at the uh, crash rebel ship, which this might look familiar to some of you. We have to recover mission data. And the flight transponder, which there's the transponder. Where do you get the data? From the Imperial operators that were on the transport. Got it. I think we we're going to have to do some slaying here. Uh-oh. Might have to cloak out of this one. Yeah, we're gonna have to cloak out of this one. I'm pretty sure this would've been easier if I just flagged down than came here, but... I'm trying to do it as intended. Okay, I've got the transponder. I think I have to pick up the data pad. There's a lot of guys here. Let's just try and do it really, 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 really fast. Yay! 
<laughs> Spy. <laughs> uh, gotta go to normal. Alright, here we are with Major Geg? 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 Winthizen. Oh, such bad news that the transport was destroyed. But the Empire must go on. Here, please take this ballistics report to Grand Admiral Thrawn. Uh, where the hell's the delivery? Was mentioned the mission data, but it is known that he would be in normal. Uh... Whoa, shock trooper armor langings. Did I pick these up last time we were here in normal? No, I didn't. Might as well pick them up now. We are doing Imperial stuff. Someone lost their pants. The hero is Celadir, who says, Before you even ask, the prototype was stolen. You will have to recover it from the thieves before they can fence it. They let slip that their hideout is somewhere outside of normal. Okay. Let's go find it outside of normal. I'm just going to grab the waypoint. Oh, time for this BS. All right, here we are here. Cover the prototype. Somebody else was just here. Somebody else doing this quest line? There's some high level guys. There's level 91 dudes in here. Do I have to slay techno thieves? Oh yeah, that is it. Okay, bye. We have to destroy the rebel commandos who are on the Man, this place is really to send me everywhere, huh? I like how they made a Mount Rushmore out of Gungan heads. <laughs> Alright, so we have to destroy the rebel commandos, so here we are. I did smoke and mirrors too soon. Uh-oh. Oopsie poops. Oh no. It's a spider joy that you bought because you thought it was cool and have a fighting buddy. Oh yeah, if you bought it at a high combat level, you can't use droids unless they're within I think it's ten levels of your level. So if it was a if it was a droid with a level rating ninety, you can't use it until you're eighty. And even then they'll get down level to level sixty. Because only traders can use combat droids of level ninety. That's a thing that Legends added. Previously, it was like if you're level ninety, you can only they'd only scale to sixty. I know that's really confusing and weird, and it's not explained anywhere. You're not alone. <laughs> that's as of the galaxy's experience. I mean, any old MMO really, but I like to tease galaxies for it, just because it has so many of those. This guy will actually do melee? Sick. Alright, we're done uh, defeating the Rebel Commandos. We have to go port back to Thrawn. So, let's go back. Talking to Thrawn, who is looking sad for a second. Says, well done. I do not impress easily. I don't expect the Rebels to think twice before shooting down another transport, but I will make sure they pay dearly whenever they do. General Veers feels the same. We should speak with him. Power on TCs. Yeah. Oh, we also got a schematic for a lightweight military pack. Neat. But speaking of General Veers, they say, I have a mission for you. Infiltrate a rebel base on Talus for information about the rebel destruction of the Death Star. Yes, sir. The rebels will pay for the loss of so many Imperial lives. All right, so here we are at the rebel base. We have to search for information, eliminate com the commander, and defeat the rebel troops. So let's just start eliminating rebel troops. Sorry, Major Dared Nekor, but you gotta go. You guys are really focused on the work. I can really kill them straight across from each other, and they just don't even register it. All right, let's uh, search their information server here. 
Yeah, I would like more decorative building types that are smaller, specifically for Corellia Talus. Because Naboo, you have a couple small ones, like the like the little garden gazebo and the tower, and then Tatooine has some varying sizes. But all of the Corellia ones are massive, and I can I can't fit them anywhere because my uh, town's so hilly. So I can't really use them. You want some larger Naboo types? Yeah, to be fair, I think the only really big Naboo type is that uh, it looks like the uh, like a hotel building, kind of. Alright, so we defeat the last re rebel here. What does this say? Rebel command base, looking for someone. At the rebel base, you found information for three pilots who are believed to have been part of the attack in Yemen 4. Eliminate them. The third rebel pilot. It's located at the Geonosian bunker. Mist falls on Dathomir. Oh my goodness. We're going to have to do a tour de force. I know exactly what pilot this is in the Geonosian bunker because we did that recently. Oh man. <laughs> I didn't realize. I knew we were going to have to go into like Death Watch and pass the first door, so I prepared for that. I didn't realize I'm going to have to run to the Geo Cave. Now I know what that pilot's there for. It's for this theme park. Oh, no. Aw. Uh, okay. I think what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, I think I'm going to flag down. <laughs> uh, I don't... That's not going to help me with all of these, but... Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, the Rebel theme park has you running everywhere, too, but... Oh my goodness. You're gonna... Because I don't have to go all the way in the Geo Cave, luckily, but I have to get by the first couple of doors, I remember. Maybe it's just, like, the first and second door? So I'm gonna have to pull that up. Is there an Imperial Recruiter here? Yeah, there he is. Alright, so here we are back at the Geonosian Cave. Y'all... I remind me running through this with my officer and medic before. Uh, we're just going to try and uh, quickly sneak through it with our spy. Hopefully I have enough camo. If not, I do have some power-ups I can roll for even more camo. But honestly, outside of uh, the quarantine zone and Death Watch Bunker, I haven't had too much of a problem with just running with my base camo. Um, Those locations, though, I was getting like instant discovered. Which, quarantine zone, I get it. Because it is scaled for like groups. So it's like, ooh, it should be harder. Or you shouldn't be able to just to stealth everything there. And to be fair, stealth won't help you with some of the fights. Or some of the objectives. As we saw when I did the Death Trooper quest line. So again, there is a walk through in the SWG Legends wiki to do this cave, but I think that's all I need. I think I just need those two doors. I think I could just go to the pilot who's back down here. Past the spider. Spider warning incoming. There's the spider. Episode 9 in addition to episode 8 are best fixed by just dumping them in the trash and redoing them from scratch. Honestly, just get rid of the whole sequel trilogy. I don't hate Ray. She's just not interesting. So here's Fen Corandel. They never made her interesting. Okay. Well, there's the first one down. Uh, let's go to... Let's go to Dathomir next. Yeehaw. <laughs> Um, this is why I picked up Burst of Shadows, by the way. Because I knew we were going to be having to run through some long bunkers during this quest line. I didn't know about the Geo Cave. But I'm glad I uh, switched up my expertise to grab Burst of Shadows. <laughs> I mean, granted, I have my sprint stim, but man, that's got a even longer cooldown. I'm still really curious what the hell they're doing for the new Star Wars films. Because they did confirm Daisy Ridley's coming back to lead the new Jedi Order. She doesn't know what that means as of the last public interview she had. 
so it sounds like they were really in the early stages of planning. That was like last year or the year before or something. I haven't been following it. But I'm just like... I thought Daisy Risley were, were going to be one of those cast members who's like, I never want to touch anything Star Wars again. Like, um... Uh, the actor who played... Oh, John Boyega and, um... The guy who played Poe. They were both like, yeah, screw that. We're never doing that again. <laughs> but maybe they just offered Daisy enough money. I mean, yeah, I can come back and create another batch of slices. Damn, mannequin. Give me a slice of that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they let him join the council. He was just too good at cutting cheese. The Jedi Council didn't have the budget to buy a uh, pizza cutter, so they just upped Anakin, but did not give him the rank of master. You were only here for our parties, Anakin. <laughs> I also didn't like the characterization of uh, Kylo Ren, a.k.a. Ben. It all, it all felt kind of weird. But that maybe that's just because after episode 7, they just it didn't really feel like it went anywhere. <laughs> ben Spolo had more potential as a character than Ray had, at least. It's true. I, I was also very... Um, I remember when Ben... I remember that film came out. I was at work. And my um, co-worker sat there... Uh, desktop background to Ben Swallow, and so then everyone started setting their desktop and lock screens to Ben Swallow. So I remember like we had our um, Lee's lead come in, and they were like, "Why is everyone's desktop background Kylo Ren?" Because all the lock screens were just him with his shirt off, extra wide. Uh, the armor I'm wearing is the CCT Protector armor. Big. Uh, it's from the Bespin Holland and Arena Rewards vendor. Uh, but the full set is CCT, uh, and then the waistband I'm wearing is actually the Guavian Death Gang belt, which occupies your, uh, bandolier, which occupies your, uh, backpack slot. Thank you. Yeah, I figured that if I'm going from Rebel to Imperial, I should change up my look. And since I went Spy, Double Agent, I was like, let's do some crazy assassin-looking stuff, and the CCT seemed to fit the bill. Alright, so we gotta find the Rebel pilot around here. I probably should just get the waypoint off the wiki instead of driving around. Oh, there's my badge. Lester Misty Falls and Journey. Even though I came here during the, which is a Dathomir theme park, but I didn't drive over the POI. Uh, I'll just go get the waypoint. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking about getting rid of this armor set. Because I was originally trying to work it into my rebel look, but I was like, it looks too aggressive. And I want to mix it up with the prototype armor. And then I, for a bit, thought I was just going to get rid of it. But like, you know what? I don't really need the cash. Let's just hold on to it. It was a lot of gas. And then I'm like, like oh, wait, this, work, this, this will work good for, like, a spy look. I could have gone, like, the all, like, charcoal, flat black look, but I felt like the red accents kind of helped vary it a little bit. There's the rebel up on the weirdly distorted piece of ground. Shouts to the terrain generator. <laughs> they got a little nice speed here with them. That speeder is in the game. It drops from Avatar hard mode, I believe. Swamp speeder. I think. Either way, let's go find the last one on uh, Mount Shalot. The lock. Wow, this guy's raring. All right, those are all the pilots. Got to go back to General Veers. All right, here's General Veers. Rebel officer claims to have information for us. Go to Dantooine and investigate. Dantooine, I'm on my way. Proceed with care. I do not uh, know what you should expect. I think so far this um, quest line has been well developed in terms of like objectives, but there's no plot. The plots just go stop rebels, but there's no like, like the very first quest had like the traitor plot going on, but ever since then we've just been running chores. Also, wh <laughs> where the. F what? Where is this? East? All the way to the east? Oh, why did you give me different color wave? Whatever. So, like, I'm a little disappointed because I feel like the Rebel one had a little bit of more of an intrigue in some of the quest lines. Or maybe I'm just misremembering because I haven't thought about it in like a couple weeks. But, uh, 
yeah, this has been kind of... Plot-wise, this really hasn't been anything. Which is weird, because they went out of their way to include iconic characters like Thrawn. But then they don't really bring Thrawn's personality through at all, or tie in with a quest. He's just giving you chores to do. Seems like a waste of opportunity. Kind of fits Thrawn, though. You don't have to understand. Just do it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I like... Even, like, for Thrawn, that's fair. But, like, all of them are like this. Like, General Veers was like this. Which you can also say that's appropriate for Veers. But there's... I don't know. I like having a little plot. <laughs> You're liking Andor for the most part? Or are you just watching it now? I think a lot of people bounced off Andor, especially the first couple episodes. And I can see why when I watched it for the first time. Um, there's a... They, start, they throw a lot of balls up in the air at once. So it can be a little overwhelming to follow with the number of characters they introduce. But I think they catch most of, the, most of those, and they have a lot of good payoffs and moments. There's probably two characters I could point to to where I feel like they didn't quite get there with them in the time that they had. But if they do any more, I know I hope to see them developed further. Yeah, it's less about the individual characters and how comparing they are, but what the lessons they're imparting to Andor are. So, like, the prison's, like, the like an excellent arc for that. Like, obviously, the guy who helped, the the prison leader who helped organize and run the prison riot and whatever. I don't remember his name, but I remember his monologue, and I remember his character growth arc, and I remember how it impacted and changed how Andor viewed. Because the entire series is Andor's experiencing all these things and seeing how all the ways that the Empire's system lends to oppression and disempowers people. And he goes from the guy who would just do anything to save his own skin and get away from the problem and being a survivor to being like, no, there's something I need to do and something I need to fight for. And all those characters that he meets along his journey reinforce that. Also, they introduce rebel leaders who are like super morally gray, if not just as evil as some Imperial characters. I'm like, yeah, that's a rebellion. <laughs> Everyone's war criming now. All right, we got to meet with a potential rebel informant. I don't know where the... F I don't know why there's two way... Is he underground? Is that what the waypoint's for? The rebels really are terrorists. Some of them really are. <laughs> they sure are. And that Andor, Andor gets really freaking dark. The rebels literally, in, literally get civilians killed <laughs> to like incite rebellion. And I'm like, shit, <laughs> that's real though. You're given a timer of ten minutes to wait. Hold on, what? I don't have a timer. Make your way to the given waypoint, but be careful. It is a trap. Once you reach the waypoint, four additional troopers will spawn. What? I didn't get trapped. Am I supposed to get trapped over here by these nice lizards? I guess I just gotta go through it. Oh, it's a trap at the end of the base. Spoilers, I guess. <laughs> I do. I love fantasy politics. I played all of Mass Effect, including the bad ones. <laughs> Prepare to die, Imperial dog. You'll never escape this bunker alive. Okay, they jumped to ambush me, but. Uh, because I'm cloaked, they didn't start the combat. These two were supposed to ambush me. <laughs> All right, I gotta find the officer. Uh... Oh, I was like, where is he? Let me target his name. He's right there. Wow. All right, well, Spy's definitely cheating in this mission. <laughs> Literally didn't have to deal with combat. Hello. Goodbye. Got him. All right, back to General Veers. Where's the shadows? Let's go. Imperial dog, but Bothan. Yeah, if you call me Imperial dog, I guess that's not far off from the truth right now. Harris and Freedom Fairies can be the same thing. Just depends on the side you're looking at them from. Yep. I guess that's the point they're trying to make. I just thought it was funny that, like, one of the Imper one of the rebel instigators is literally getting questioned by Saul Guerrero on his morality. And I'm like, dude, when Saul Guerrero is like, hey, I don't know about this man, <laughs> you're, you're like, wait a second. <laughs> Are we the... <laughs> Are we going too far? Question mark. Uh, but that's the that's the point. Uh, that's part of the conversation Andor offers. It's just like, hey, how far is too far when fighting for like greater good or whatever? And it, because it shows multiple characters uncomfortable with uh, uh, Lufin's uh, morality. My favorite part is Leia's an instigator. <laughs> She's like, hey, don't remember our fucking goal. Don't pussy out on me. <laughs> start that. Start that shit. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Leia, get your hands dirty, girl. Get in there. Let's go in as a Zabrak. Horny Imperial. Well, even Rebel Zabraks are horny. They're all horny. 
I forgot Saw Guerrera, Guerrera was in the animated Clone Wars series until I went back and did a rewatch like two years ago. I was like, oh yeah, they introduced him here as a baby. He's literally a child. He's like a teenager. Man, they Dave Filoni just loves bringing Saw back in every single corner. <laughs> I one time ran a D&D campaign where my party went, are we the bad guys? And I'm like, haha, I got you to say it. <laughs> All right, we're back with General Veers. So it was a trap, I should have known, but thanks to you, that rebel will no longer be a threat. I have better news. You have the honor of the audience with the Emperor. I suggest you don't keep him waiting. Uh oh, we gotta go. <laughs> oh, we got a droid toolsmith's chest uh, schematic. Wow, that's. I don't think that's useful, but cool, thanks. Alright, uh, let's go talk to Papa Palpatine. What does Grandpa have for us today? I expected a bigger room, to be honest. Queen Kylantha is dangerously close to betraying her empire, her emperor. But my overly magnanimous mood, I would like to show her that the empire is her friend. Failing in this is not an option. Yes, my lord. There is a little-known group of mercenaries in Endor known as Janstic mercenaries who will approach their leader on my behalf. He is expecting you, but those employ must not know that the empire is hiring them. Leave at once and deliver to Verka Jansk my instructions. Okay, this is a group quest, so this is going to get spicy. Off to Andor. Mission that killed you was Vader. You have to go into Death Watch Bunker. Yeah, that's definitely the part where I've seen people ask for help on. I should be okay. Okay, we are, uh... We're taking a shortcut out there. I'm not driving all the way out there. <laughs> I'm gonna show you on my shortcut. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to my city. I'm gonna go to my uh, ATAT travel house. And there's a travel station that I have programmed here in Maple Grove, which is in the northwest corner of Corellia. They've been trying to regrow recently. But we've got uh, ATAT heads to each other's houses, so I'm gonna go to Maple Grove. And... We're gonna go down here. Did you ever finish it, Cyclops? Or did you get, um... Were you, did you just get stuck in Death Watch? Because I'm gonna go do it here, I guess, in, in a couple of missions, so... If you need help getting through the first door. And then we're gonna come in here, and then we're just gonna go to the Town East Stronghold. <laughs> you finished? Nice. And now... We only have, like, 1,700 meters instead of, like, old 12,000. <laughs> Yay. That was worth it. That saved me, like, five minutes of driving. All right, so here we are, uh, mercenary leader. Why is this base full of enemies? Hold on, what? Oh, he's the only one who's recognizing us in the bunker. Okay. I was like, why are there so many? Whatever. Oh, there he is. I was like, am I in the right place? I think he's down here. There he is. Thank goodness I did the legacy quest and how you saw the elevator bases. Hey, dude. The Emperor sent you? I understand his wishes, but first you need to retrieve a data desk from the Rebel base in Dantooine. Return after you have it, after it's been altered by the Imperial Operative in Kadara. Oh my goodness, you're gonna have me running chores, my guy. Alright, we gotta go to the Rebel base on Dantooine. I am gonna make an AT-8. I'm gonna make a travel location here, so I don't have to come back here. <laughs> Yeah, shuttle camps are programmable ITVs. I got a snow speeder and a um, uh, G9, so I should be okay. It's a DSGA elite at the end of the Emperor. I think that was tough for you. Might be tough for me. We'll find out. Uh, Endor Merc. Been busy on this tune? Uh, yeah. You think I'll just hanging around not doing anything with my fifth character nah man i did i've done so much i think I actually done more on this character than most of my other characters on legends at this point <laughs> that this place exists there's so many of them beta 
I do agree that cop is very convenient because they keep it a small structure, but Darker Waters has one like this. Oh, it's over there? <laughs> when it said Rebel Base, I thought it meant Rebel Base. But no, they met the other Rebel Base on Dantooine. My bad. Ewok meat's supposed to be really good. Um, I don't know. I think it'd be pretty lean. I think it'd be kind of gamey. You know what I mean? Yeah, but they'd probably subsist off like berries and small game. I feel like it's like, it would probably be like the rabbit meat of the galaxy or sentient creatures or whatever. Aren't Ewoks cannibal? Probably. <laughs> In some canon, probably. Ewok meat is a delicacy? Weird. They were gonna eat Luke Leon on Hoth. Oh, I guess so. I do vaguely remember that from the movie. Yeah, because cannibalism implies that they eat each other. Eating another species isn't cannibalism, but it can be looked down upon if that species is sentient. Interesting. Ryan here to fact check us. Yeah, what's up with these waypoints that keep like leading to like the main object, not the front of the base? All right, it's probably in the big base, but let me check in here first. Given where that waypoint was. Yep. Do not persist between restarts. Oh. So if you really wanted to, your props to persist for the longest period of time, you'd have to do it right after a restart. Interesting. That's probably the data disk that I need. Let's see if I can just declug, grab it fast. Ready? Got it. <laughs> All right, now we gotta go to Kadara to have this data disk altered for some reason. You didn't even need to channel that one, just have to click on it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So if your storyteller props exist for more than three days, without the feature and you only do them on weekends because the storyteller ex uh, benefit extends it for how long again is it four days okay so if you use it like right after a restart on monday then that extension pays off it's only two city expertise points and it's at the top of the tree so i still think it's good even now knowing that Deliver it to an Imperial operative who will offload the information on the data disk and upload new data. But you don't give me a name or a waypoint. Is it one of the guys standing out here? Whatever. What? It's all the way over there? I would have never found this guy. What? If they gave me the name, I could at least search for him, but... Whatever. When are you decorating said meta with props? I mean, I already have. I put Rhodes... But, yeah, I'm not done. Alright, now we gotta bring the disc to Vera. Back on Endor. No, I didn't. It just said an Imperial Operative. I didn't, literally, I didn't know it was literally his name was an Imperial Operative. I'm an Imperial Agent. Don't touch me. Like, I didn't tell you where he was in Kadara. He just said, travel to Kadara and Naboo and deliver it to an Imperial Operative who will offload the information on this disc and upload data that will later implicate the Rebel Alliance. So, I guess it tells you that its name is literally an Imperial Operative, but they could also be, like, a named character, because they do that all the time. And they don't tell you where he was in, um, Kadara. So I was like, I'm not gonna guess. I'll just get the waypoint off the wiki. Okay, let's go down to the Mercenary. We're back with Vera. Speaking to them, says, you have the disc? Good. Let me let the Emperor know that I am prepared to do his bidding. Return to the Emperor. Okay, <laughs> back to the Emperor. This one's really just... I mean, I guess if I didn't have stealth, I'd have to be fighting through these mer mercenaries twice. And then all those rebels earlier. So I guess uh, Spy Camo is definitely flexing here on a time save. Theoretically, you could run through all these like as a Jedi and then cloak at the end also. But if I was doing this as an officer, I'd have to kill everything. Grand killing it all would probably go faster because I'd be able to still 
give myself reaction constantly. This cloaking strat's probably quicker, though, so. Pacifist Imperial Operative. I don't know, I've been killing some people. More like speedrun Imperial Operative. Minus all the parts where I got lost. <laughs> and I had to start, stop and read the wiki. We're back with the Emperor. The mercenaries are going to intimidate Queen Kylanthra and demand military and financial aid. What are my orders? You are to clear the way for the mercenaries by writing, by ridding the queen <laughs> of her security. There's a <laughs> little enough of it. As she believes herself to be quite safe, we are going to convince her otherwise. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Freud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, as the member of the Royal Security Force, he didn't hear that. Thanks. <laughs> I gotta go ride the Queen. As ordered by the Emperor. <laughs> go ride the Queen so I can watch. Uh, sir, <laughs> I am not in a non-con. Thank you very much. You will eliminate her security detail at the Thebe Palace. Okay, I'm just gonna go disable the terminals and eliminate the Queen's <laughs> expert security experts. <laughs> that's that's Palpatine's secret. He's got nothing on under the robe, and that robe chafes, and that's intentional. Oh, yeah, maybe maybe um, using all of that unlimited power on Mace Windu just drained him of his physical faculties. Cer certainly made him look like a prune. There was a hologram that he was bugged for, but he could see through it and he had nothing. <laughs> and he had tidy whities. It makes sense. <laughs> I mean, why, like, why give him a shirt if you don't know if canonically he wears a shirt under that robe? You know, don't be presumptuous. That's a suit. That's a don't assume Palpatine's even looking for a girl. For all, he, for all we know, he doesn't give a shit. He's like, I'm too busy being evil to have romance right now, focusing on my career. Palpatine's <laughs> very career-oriented. Orient yeah, but, like, for all we know, he, like... I don't know, he could have done in vitro. It didn't mean he banged... It didn't mean he banged one out. Does he canonically? Damn. Like, is there a scene where that describes his banging? I like how the Queen's is there, and she's the screams of death coming from the hallway. Don't worry, Queen. Nothing nothing going on here. Don't worry about it. Um, everything's fine here. We're fine. There's just a reactor leak in your hallway. Mollify the Queen? <laughs> I don't like the context of this, given my previous slip up. The Queen was not pleased with her visit from the mercenaries as the Queen has become vocal over this. Lord Vader has informed her that the Empire had no involvement with this. Speak with her and convey the Emperor's assurances that she has complete support of the Empire. So the Emperor sends his assurances that the Empire had nothing to do with the attack on my chambers. As you say, I am not yet convinced, but I am listening. Oh, gotta go back to Palpatine. That was it. I'm trying to think there's a faster way. Actually, there's a faster way. Check out this Check out this gamer routing here. All right, so check this out. We're going to actually travel to lock, and then we're just going to ITV. <laughs> Tarkin fucks Dala? Tarkin fucks? He saw this funny Star Wars family tree suggesting he was Anakin's father. I think I've heard of that before. Was the other parent Darth Plagueis? <laughs> it's like Shmi and then uh, Palpatine slash Darth Plagueis as the as the father. I don't like the connotations of this quest anymore, guys. I want to go back to the rebel side. Palpatine's grossing me out. There's a shower scene. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Plagueis was wise AF. I remember back when I was playing Tor, I had a guild mate who described me how Anakin was conceived without a father. And it was that when the when Palpatine challenged Darth Plagueis for his spot as like, you know, head Sith Lord, their force powers clashed so much that it reverberated throughout the force, which caused an Anakin's conception. I don't know if that was canon. I don't know if it's currently canon, but that's the story I heard before. <laughs> Yeah, one just one little slip up of me reading dialogue, and then we get all this Tarkin sexery. Anyway, it's just Palpatine. Hope you're satisfied, you pervert. It's now time to prove that the Queen and that the Rebels are behind her recent difficulties. What do you need me to do? You eliminate Vera 
yeah, you're going to eliminate the mercenary leader and thus any possible connection to the Empire. And you will provide proof that the Rebel Alliance is behind the attack to the Queen. Ah, the old good one to switcheroo. Where am I going? Try the mercenary base and exterminate them. Wait, do I have to go back to the Endor base? Yeah. Go to his bunker in Endor and then retrieve the data disk. Hey. Going down the elevator will give you a different layout of the base. Like, you think we're going to have to go down multiple elevators? Imagine that therapy therapy said. I don't think Palpatine would ever agree to go to therapy. I think he's the kind of individual who thrives when people don't get the help they need. Literally, if you think about it, if, if the Jedi Order just gave Anakin mental health benefits and encouraged him to go to therapy, we might have avoided so much trauma. Oh, it's right here. It's gonna... Excuse me, sir, I need that data disk. I think he actually might be down here. Maybe. Because we don't have to go to the back to the one we talked to. I think we have to go to a different one. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> There's two versions of him in the same base. Oh, he's tough. Uh, I'm going to defeat his uh, guards first. Then I'm going to cloak and restart. That's why I'm not using... How much HP does he got? He has 134,000. That's not too bad, actually. He has six. Oh, shit. Six whole HP, dude. Oh, right, you know what? Let's use the layer crystal for the memes. This is technically the strongest NPC we fought so far today. He is not too bad. Uh, I was a little bit more afraid than I needed to be. Got him. All right, back to the queen. Kill Minox to build him an exoskeleton on the body. Let's not reenact the plot of a Rick and Morty episode. I don't want to think of... I, I just don't want to think of Rick Sanchez in the Emperor's Cloak. It just seems so bad in my brain. Oh, I hate it. It's going to happen now. Someone quick, get on the fan art or Photoshop. You know, I would be surprised if it hasn't already happened. Like, I'm sure there's already some unofficial crossover art of Star Wars and Rick and Morty, given the popularity of Rick and Morty. I just don't want to think of the words Wubble Wubble Dub Dub coming out of Palpatine's mouth. Ah, <laughs> uh, so cursed. Listen, like most people, I enjoyed the first three seasons of Rick and Morty, but uh, it didn't have the same scratch after the search three, and obviously... Uh, other events surrounding the show has definitely diminished the appeal. Honestly, I think Mr. Burns from The Simpsons fits in Emperor's clothes more than a uh, Rick does. Smithers as Darth Vader doesn't make sense in my brain, though. Smithers would be more like uh, one of the Emperor's like two dudes that stand with him, like in Senate meetings. Uh, the guy with the tentacles that's fucking useless, and the other guy. <laughs> The guy with the tentacles, I forget his name. He's like, in canon, just a worthless shithead. That's just a mouthpiece for Palpatine. All right, we're here with the queen, though, and she says, I am shocked that the Rebel Alliance would stoop so low as to make a personal attack on myself, the queen of Naboo. You may tell the emperor that I apologize for my misgivings and that he has my full support. Get played, girl. And I've got to go eliminate the rebel general who's hiding outside Deja Peak. Okay. Masamita. Yeah, you know it. I couldn't remember his name to save my life. Just because he's so forgettable. I am going the wrong way. I still need to do the uh, Best Bin 144 quiz challenge at some point. I just need to figure out what I'm doing it and how I'm structuring it. I like it to be an interactive for everybody, but I can't sit here and quiz you all through 144 questions. <laughs> you did that one sitting no wiki? I mean, I could see you doing it without a wiki because eventually you just run through every option. Take a while. <laughs> Still love how Palpatine rules the entire galaxy when his home on a boo. True. He's just like... I mean, when you're like the ultimate overlord of like the galactic government, 
if you want to just work from home, yeah, why not? Screw it. Especially when you're like you're like a Palpatine and you're like a full on dictator. Like, who's gonna question you? <laughs> if it was a Democratic nomination, that I could see it being a little bit more. I mean, I guess the U.S. president works from home because the White House becomes their home. <laughs> Uh, you think he has a daily teams meeting with the major company? Yeah, and then teams always crashes and glitches out or goes down for maintenance of the improper team times. And then he sits submit he submits a ticket to Microsoft and they still ignore him, even though he he no one can get Microsoft to cooperate, especially for your business solutions. Not that alternatives are much better. If you try and put a support request in at Google, they just literally go, "We here's an FAQ. Don't talk to us." Vader has no clue how tech works. Fizz calls tech support every time they put him on hold for like an hour. Sure do. And the phone's in his helmet, too. So it's, it's like a button on his chest. And so, like, he'll forget to turn off. He'll forget to, like, mute his end of the phone. So, like, they'll pick up while he's on the middle of, like, the toilet. Or, like, emptying his, like, bag or whatever it works for, st for his system. He's like, oh, shit. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to imagine, like... Palpatine being like, all right, how does how how is this how is the occupation of Corellia going? How, where are we at? And they just pull up a, a Microsoft Teams Power BI dashboard, and then half the half the data doesn't properly load because the filters are jank be because they subcontracted it out, and then like none of the data is loading from their uh, curl cube, so pivot tables aren't working. So then they have to stop the meeting and load a PDF that was backed up 24 hours ago with slightly outdated information, which makes it irrelevant for the meeting. Shit, I, my job scarred me, guys. <laughs> you, you can tell this is a very specific example. <laughs> oh, God. All right, here we are. I got to kill General Jason Nyer. Bye. Probably should just use preparation or whatever. <laughs> I bet you do, Beta. Alright, we did it. Yay. Oh no. Spy. Spy is pretty banger for this quest line, I'm gonna have to say. Real W. If if you can relate on a spiritual level with specific business tech issues. I think that speaks to a lot to the state of commercial tech. Here we are with the Emperor. He says, Queen Kylantha is now completely devoted to me, which is as it should be. You may go. Perhaps Lord Vader can make use of you. I still don't like the way he phrased any of this. Oh, we got the AT, -AT pilot suit. Survival suit. Wow. It's just like from the movie, dude. Remember the one where they gotten big metal camels and shot some frisbee snuck in the snow? That was great. All right, let's go talk to... Lord Vader. And here's Darth Vader. I like the two Jedi statues with red sabers next to you. Who's your interior decorator? Vader says I have contacted the sir. Uh, I've contracted the services of a special agent to watch for rebel activity connected to recent events on Tatooine and Yavin Four. That agent has informed him of a rebel courier that was destined for Naboo. Yes, Lord Vader. You will find that courier, retrieve whatever he carries, and destroy him. Okay, let's go find him. That's okay, it was normal on Rory. Okay. Like, Darth Vader being very direct makes sense. This is kind of how he talks in the films. Yo, guys, uh, why the fuck? <laughs> Hit me with them waypoints. The Rebel theme park was full of waypoints. I don't know why the Imperial theme park is like, here, suffer. He's outside the city, all right. If I was ever to appear in a Star Wars film, I'd want to be one of the people who stand in, like, those droid suits. That way you can't see my face. So if the movie's bad, no one's going to care. You know what I mean? But you still get to be like, look, that was me in there. And if people don't believe you, your name would be in the credits. You'd be like, see, I'm in the credits. I was droid number four. <laughs> All right, here's the courier. Named a courier. Got him. We got to speak with Mara Jade. <gasps> legacy character that doesn't exist anymore in canon, I think. Seeking further information, you're 
Epper's hand, Mara Jade. She is currently investigating Death Watch Bunker in Endor. Okay, off to Death Watch Bunker we go. Dun, dun, dun. She's only one of the Emperor's hands, though. The Emperor has more than one hand. He has many hands. Okay, we are here at Death Watch Bunker. So, first of all, I already have Section A passkey. Mara Jade is behind the first door of Death Watch Bunker, which you normally need to activate the terminal, fight a few ways enemies, and then get a key. I did this previously off streams, well, in an unrecorded stream. So, we're already good to go. That was just because that terminal has a 10 minute cooldown, so that it's why well, else get the key? I don't have to wait for it. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Death Watch Bunker runs as a spy, you know that traditionally you are able to run through Death Watch Bunker, kill ghosts for the best odds drops of liquids. On Star Wars Galaxy's Legends, they increased the camo detection of specifically Super Battle Droids, and I believe some of the other NPCs in the bunker as well. I know it's Super Battle Droids for sure. So typically, if you're going to run Death Watch Bunker, I think you need to have like, I think maybe over 400 camo or something. But more recently, they fixed a glitch in camouflage detection, which has made camouflage detection e happen even more frequently. So as a demonstration, right now I have camouflage in all of my gear pieces. And I have the expertise for camouflage giving me 390. I'm going to activate camouflage power-ups that will each give me an, about an extra 300 camouflage. Now, normally you wouldn't need this much camouflage, like 500, you'd say, oh, that's overkill burrito. 600 burrito, you don't need that much camouflage. 705? Dude, you're like undetectable now. There's no way in heck anybody's going to see you in here. So, as a demonstration to see what camouflage is currently like for spies on SWG Legends, as a recording, going to Death Watch Bunker, let's see how long I last before I get detected. So let's enter in. And let's just go through the first room of the Black Sun. Hey guys, how's it going? Alright, so good so far. Let's turn the corner. Let's go down here. Got Now in here we do have a super battle droid. Oh, they got saw before I was even in line of sight. That was a Black Sun that detected me. That wasn't even the SBD. So we're just gonna run. Yeah, uh, you could stack camo for days and you're not gonna beat the camo detection anymore. In here. Click the terminal. Grab passkey. Let's keep going. And we're just going to run right in here. Cool. All right, here's Mara Jade. So yeah, this would be very difficult if you weren't, uh, if you didn't have access to camouflage, or if you had a hard time defeating enemies on your own. But um, yeah, obviously it's not as easy as to be in here. Typically, if you are going to try and solo Death Watch Bunker, I'd recommend just get a good loaded out Jedi and come in here if you're going to grind. It's not really worth it for Spy anymore. You can actually see this some players in here right now working their game. But here we are with Mara Jade, who you can tell has a upscaled model. She got a little bit of extra attention here. She's got a little purple in her pants. And her undersuit, it looks like. <laughs> I'm so small. Yeah, Mara Jade, I guess, got the slider set to tall. I'm at the minimum height for a boffin, so I'm extra small. <laughs> so I'm just looking at her like, hi, big lady. If I speak with her, she says, you may tell Lord Vader that I have the information he seeks. And if you talk with her again, she says, I have important work to do, please not. <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys put Mara Jade on here, any of the game, and you gave her literally two lines of dialogue. Why the fuck? Why'd you bother? Anyways, with the help of Mara Jade, Darth Vader has located the recipient of the courier's message. Ugh, Pollard. He's somewhere around Monia on Naboo. Seek him out, the word he knows, and destroy him. All right, back to Naboo. Farming Death Watch is literally working the mines. I, I'll pass on ever doing that. I do have to help Beta craft a jetpack at some point, though. So I will be back at, be back at some point in time. Yeah, so, uh, man, it's pretty wild 700 camo really doesn't do dick in Death Watch. I'd be fine with that change if it wasn't farmable as a solo Jedi. Like, I'm like, well, if you're not going to make a solo farmable for really anybody, then, like, just make a group content. Just make it instanced, even better. <laughs> then people don't have to fight over everything. Let's make it instanced. You can do once a day, nothing, and it responds. <laughs> Probably adjust drop odds at that point, but whatever. 
Personally, I do a total overhaul of the thing, but I'm not going to get into that now. All right, here is the uh, rebel agent we need to defeat, so uh, let's defeat them. Wow, I miss a lot of hits. Same with the Geo Bunker, yeah. Even the Warren also. The Warren's technically worse considering that if you don't get the uh, access card in the first room, you gotta wait for it to respawn for 30 minutes. But anyways, we defeated that agent and um, they gotta go back to Vader. So let's see that. One day you will. Yeah, I don't know, dude. You got a long list of projects and I don't blame you. There's a lot of things that I would like to do to this game if I had the <laughs> developmental interest. You want to see the Gungan City? I think I've seen some people request the Gungan City before. That'd be an interesting location. Definitely novel for the setting. Is it you or the space box is sometimes a little weird? It, no, there's sometimes a little weird. Depending on the ship speed and its hitbox, you will have to aim further or less between. So like when you're chasing a ship, you know, you and you have a targeted, you know, you have that uh, crosshair in front of it. Sometimes you don't always want to aim directly at the crosshair. Sometimes you want to aim a little behind it and then sometimes a little in front of it. Like a really good example is um, if you're shooting a Y wing, their hitbox is really flat. So it's a big hitbox if you're shooting from the top, but really hard from the side. So some ships have whack hitboxes like that. You're right with Vader. Now he says, travel to Yavin 4 and find the rebel leaders that Hollard claimed uh, would have more information. I don't remember him claiming whatever. Rather than being on your way, you are still here. Do not try my patience. Okay. I just said bye, dude. Anyways. Off to Yavin 4. Vader's got a robotic stick up his butt. You just fought a gunship on a very close range and clearly saw your shots hitting and didn't do any damage while hitting about the middle of the gunship. You could have been hitting in a spot with, called shield flares. So if you're hitting at a slight angle with the hitbox, you'll see shield flare outs and you're not technically hitting the right spot of the ship. You want to like typically aim straight for the front, back, or like a hard side like ventral or dorsal. If you hit at angles, it like counts as like a thing like near miss or something. Most of the gunships have pretty straightforward hitboxes. I think the only one that you might need to, like, get more specific on is the Imperial gunship, since it's a little flatter. But, like, the Rebel one's pretty easy, and then the neutral ones are really... They're the, just flying boxes. Something else you want? Rideable Greeter Sludge... Greater Sludge Panthers. Yeah, big... You want some big cat energy? I mean, the Loath Wolves can be ridden, so I don't see why not. You can't ride the big cats. A big Lambda with extra guns. Yeah, that's the Imperial gunboat. That's the Y4. I think that's what it's called. That one's not too bad. If you're having a hard time with it, uh, it has one uh, rear gun. If you just target that weapon, I don't remember which weapon number it is. You can just fly behind it and not get shot for the most part. Y2, thank you. Y4 is the mining ship. <laughs> I think the Y... I don't have any Imperial pilots. I just see them and I'm biased. I gotta defeat the first rebel leader here, so let's just go on in. Yeah, fight that space rat. I still have the 700 camo on. They're definitely not seeing me. Probably should switch back to like damage power ups, but whatever. Oh no. <laughs> they they aggroed the nest, so the rebel NPCs here are trying to blow up the nest now. You get them. The great thing about, like, once you level, like, one pilot, you can just save all those parts you purchased and then use it to level, if you're doing Ace of Aces, or just level other pilots. Unless you buy them all at once, you don't really need to buy them all again. I have a bag. This is called ship leveling parts in one of my houses. That's all it is. This is all the parts I used to level with. There's a bunch of Black Sun vibing out here. That's a lot of potential backpack jetpack bases, but uh, I got shit to do, so. Ace of Aces is a collection. You'll unlock it once you get your first Ace Pilot unlocked, but if I go over, I think it's just in the general badges here. Oh, wait, no, you know what? It's at the top of space. Never mind. So there's this collection called Ace of Aces. There are nine pilot trainers, three for Neutral Rebel and Imperial, and Ace of Aces is beginning ace in all of these. And for that, you get the title Ace of Aces, and you get a Starship Hangar Deed, which is that big brown player structure you might have seen. You can still get a Starship Hangar Deed, I think, by selling 
space duty tokens on one of the vendors, trading those. So if you don't want to do Ace of Aces, that is an option. But Ace is mainly for flexing. The nice thing, though, is if you are doing Ace of Aces, Legends implement it so that for every pilot faction you ace, you get an XP bonus. There's a walkthrough that Splinter Strike did on the Legends forums for this. But basically, by the time you're doing your last piloting faction, you're getting like, like three times space XP or something. So grinding out all the XP is not the hard part by any means, especially by that point. It's just doing all the missions. Unlocking ships from all factions. Um, so the ships that you can use, you can only use ships for your currently pi current piloting faction and rank. So like if you get ace as uh, Royal Security Forces, but then you want to go do uh, the Corsac, pi Corsac Squadron, You'd have to quit Royal Security Forces, join Core Sex Squadron, and then start from rank one again, which means starting with the Predator type 11k mass ships again. So, you, or, uh, so you literally start over. Or I know you were doing Rebel One, so like Z95. So like your un ship unlocks do not carry over. All right, so we're at the second base now, and I need to defeat the other Rebel leader, who's in one of these two buildings. 50-50 chance. Well, oh, this is the bigger one, so it's probably this one. Oh, yeah, the ships will still be in the... It doesn't delete your ships or anything. Like, you retain the ships. You just can't use them because you won't be certified. But you can still always pack your ships back up to clear room and whatever. Here's Major Osto Elrad. Sifting through debris. The Rebels told a story of a young boy from Tatooine who possessed the powers of a Jedi. Darth Vader dismisses this as a hoax, as he himself had uh, scoured the planet years earlier and found no trace of anyone with the slightest force sensitivity. While on Yavin 4, traveled a hidden enclave of dark Jedi and convinced them to pull their abilities and read the debris of the Death Star read the debris of the death star for an imprint of the boy who has been given credit for its destruction first gather some debris from the death star okay yeah like force reading i was like what read it How, what do you mean read debris gosh darn it i keep the prototype weapon um that's because for leveling characters what i usually do is i have a crate uh heavy crate starfighter and it has a top gun so I'll use like three heavy guns for my piloting seat and then the gunner seat I'll just put the prototype weapon in because it's really light mass. And then that way I could stick a character in there and then just AFK them while I uh, still fly the crate. You hope that droids could work guns like the top gun on the Y-Wing? Nah, that'd be cool. Might also be canonically, canonically right since Rebels lack pilots so they strip the second seat in the Y-Wing and let their droids operate the turret gun. Yeah, I think it's more of a... That'd be a balancing concern if you basically had an auto-aim turret. Oh, yeah. You know what? That would become a problem with gunships. Can you imagine a Vigo? Like, all six turrets fully loaded. Or better yet, a Rebel gunship that has, like, almost no blind spots. Fully loaded with, like, auto-aim turret droids. I mean, they'd kill your weapon capacitor energy. But... <laughs> That's a lot of free firepower. Gunships have a uh, significantly larger mass than heavy fighters. And they also are allowed to equip a higher tier of ship parts. They're, and with a recent update, the ship, the turrets of any ship, but most notably with large gunships because they do the most base damage anyways, um, they will do, they have a 1.75 times bonus to damage. <laughs> so, yeah, those gunships would eat them alive. Yeah. Luckily for the Y-Wing, though, if you don't like the base chassis, since you're missing out on a gun, you can get the, uh, long probe Y-Wing, which does not have the turret seat, and then moves that gun to the front. And I think its mass is basically the same as the Doom Lizard. And it's got some tube slots on it. The Y-Wing long probe is what I switched to when I was leveling Ace. It's, and it's generally what I recommend. You can take that ship all the way up for, through Ace once you unlock it. 
Huge pilots is nice because you immediately get the Dune Lizard unlock and you can take the Dune Lizard chassis all the way to Ace, no problem. All right, we're out here at the Death Star uh, debris. Let's collect it so we can take it to the Dark Force users. Who are coincidentally not far from here. You got normal Y Wing and your Jedi for a while until you unlock your X Wing. X Wing's fun to level with. Especially once you can get, pick up an advanced X Wing. Those are pretty good for PvE. A lot of people rock a loaded out B Wing, though, for PvE. But B Wing unlocks pretty late, I think. Like, it might be Ace, actually. I don't remember. B Wing is Ace? Okay, I think you had a bad. I just, I have a loaded out Lambda, so I, 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 if, I, if I need like a solo PvE ship, I just give that over to my Rebel Pilot. <laughs> Alright, so we're here at the uh, Dark Jedi base. We're just gonna buff up just in case if he's just like, fool, I am going to gut you. For whatever reason, because... You know what? Uh, Vader knows where the Dark Jedi are, why doesn't he just go kill them all? Whatever, I'm not going to worry about it. Hello, uh, Magus Jockle. He's a Devorian. Wow, hi. I am not anyone's. I am not at anyone's bidding, but I also do not wish to die at Vader's hand. I can be pragmatic. I will do as he asks. Eliminate the Jark Jedi leader. Okay. I want to see the burrito melt this guy. Uh, we'll see. I didn't get to start in camo, though. This might be a little tricky. I don't get an extra ambush. I do already have him at half. Like, I, show, I, I should have expected such treachery. I'm like, well, you're a dark Jedi, and you're dealing with, like, the most evil of Sith Lords. I guess next to Palpatine. So, what do you expect? And he dies. Gotta go back to Darth Vader now. <laughs> Okie doke. Okay, yeah, the dark Jedi wasn't too bad. But it sounded like he was tougher than the last guy, so... To be fair, I don't think any of the bosses from the Rebel theme park were too difficult except for that one bounty hunter and that one imperial base who's like the Trandoshan. that was a rebel theme park right i think so he was pretty tough here's the emperor though uh my bad we're coming to vader sorry i'm getting my black cloaked villains uh conflated it's even darth vader's inquiries all right here we are with darth vader he's got a mouse bird hanging out with him must be lonely. Uh, Magus Jockles claim to find strong emanations of the Force from the Death Star debris. I feel certain that my own presence there ha have caused this, but I would be foolish not to be certain. No thank you? What? Magus Jockle claim to find strong emanations of the Force in the Death Star. No thank you. What? I guess I'm supposed to decline the mission? What would you have me do, Lord Vader? Jawa Dathme or recover a shard of the force from the crystal in the possession of some Night Sisters. I can do that. Advanced Wing is 808k mass version of the X-Wing. The Advanced X-Wing is not the XG Starship. It is a quest reward from the Civilians Protection Guild. Kashyyyk. Mission line. That quest is actually kind of tough, by the way. For, like, while you're leveling. You do have to fight a Corvette at the end. But... You can get three different chassis from that one. You can get the advanced TIE, the advanced X-Wing, or the advanced Vaxi. Depends on your alignment. As a Rebel Pilot, you get the advanced X-Wing, obviously. Yeah, to, to be fair, it's not as uh, difficult as the Corvette you'd fight as an ace. It's like your like pilot's first Corvette. So it's not too bad. Yeah, it's definitely the start of it, because I don't... If it has an escort, it's a much smaller escort than the um, Kessel Vet has. Like, I don't think it has any gunships escorting it. I think it's just some fighters. 
I did it not too long ago, but I forgot. Oh yeah, I forgot. We got the Darth Vader hologram also. There he is. He looks so proud. Oh yeah, doesn't it just it just kind of sits there, huh? So it's a lot easier to destroy the bottom gun and then just poke at it. And then you don't have to destroy as many components. Like you don't have to blow up the bridge or anything. It's just like the shields and then the engine, I think. Yeah, I did that quest on this series too a little while ago. But man, I've done so many quests in this game now. It's kind of hard to remember them. They, they get blurred together. I think I know where this crystal is. I don't think I need the waypoint. I have it here if I need it. But I think I know which crystal they're talking about. It's just like laying around here, right? It's like one of those things where like I've seen it before. I just... It's just not important. So I don't store it in my brain. If I don't see it on the first pass, I'll just, you know, get the waypoint. Is it behind that nice sister elder? I don't know. All right. Wow, you just want some, huh, girl? Oh my god, the pirates are on me. No, they're on her. That's even funnier. I guess she uh, coned. Probably the lightning attack. Yeah, I do love that that ship just, like, repairs itself. And it's like, oh, escort it back. I'm like, I don't know. Do I really need to help the vet? I think it'll be okay. All right, what, what the hell is this? This is part three. Oh, it's not even here. It's at the Spider Clan cave. Oh, that sucks. Uh, okay. He said the Night Sisters have it, but then it's at the Spider Clan cave. Trout on the Night Sisters Night Spider Cult Cave. I mean, I guess it is called the Night Spider Cult Cave. So I guess egg on my face for not reading it. Oh, this is like the most dangerous room. It's with all the NPCs stacked up on top of each other where I almost got pants during this theme park. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, got it. Ben Kenobi's hut? I'm gonna go back to Tatooine? Spy is easy mode, a little bit. I mean, if you have combat cloak as a Jedi, you could do a lot of these similar strats. Just spurn in, oops. Drop combat with cloak, uncloak, grab it, sprint out. You know, it's pretty wild. It is, uh, how long have I been going? It feels like forever. We're almost at four hours. Yeah, about, it took me about this amount of time to do the Rebel theme park. Granted, I knew what to do for the Rebel theme park. This one, I've had a little bit of new question marks, but. The Imperial theme park is definitely taking longer, despite me being able to just skip most of the stuff. Yeah, I can see that I'm near the end of Darth Vader. So they're comparable in length. I guess. I think the Imperial, I think the Rebel theme park has you driving to more weird spots. The, uh, Imper the Rebel theme park has you drive to a bunch of weird spots. Imperial theme park has you going to a lot of points of interest. Like, a lot of the rebel bases we went to were right outside, like, points of interest, like the Jedi Ruins. Or that weird POI on uh, Rory. Or they're just, like, little, like, camps outside of towns immediately. It's in it's interesting in the differences. I kind of... I, I think I like the rebel theme park better. Like, I, again, I know I'm skipping a lot of fights by being able to cloak, and I do like the fact, though, that a lot of the missions are just assassination missions, because as a spy, I actually do feel like I'm doing spy stuff by, like, avoiding enemies, picking targets, assassinating them, hidden fading, sabotaging, doing secrets and stuff. Like, if I was a commando, this would feel a lot less appropriate for the character I was playing, but for spy, it actually, like, hits home pretty well. And I guess, like, if you were, like, uh, like a dark side Jedi or role playing it that way because you work for the Emperor and Palpatine towards the end. You could actually also, like, you know, or play it as that as well, like your apprentice or something. So I think that also feel appropriate. Conversely, I think the Rebel theme park was pretty appropriate for, like, Spire Commando because it was a lot of, like, disrupting stuff. Like, going in and, like, just stomping a base into the dirt and doing a bunch of different things. You could also run Assassin on that, but I feel like there was a lot more um, reason to get in combat. This one, a lot of the combat that I needed to do was just, like, you know, a kill count number. 
I guess you could probably avoid a lot of combat in the Rebel theme park, huh? It's hard to articulate. Just because I don't remember the Rebel theme park, I wrote it out of my brain. <laughs> I just remember, like, the very end of it. And I remember some of the tougher bases. This one definitely had some tough fights for sure. Not just with the bosses, but with the base layout itself. Like, I, you definitely see the Ag uh, the Agrilat Swamp base. Like Cyclops mentioned, being tough, having to do with all the um, rebels sitting around those X-Wing. Right, here we are at Ben Kenobi's uh, hut. Let's go inside. Imprints. The strongest lingering echoes of the Force that you find is clearly from Obi-Wan. But there is another that remains unidentified for now. Now I'll go back to Darth Vader. I'm not Force sensitive. How did I know that? Because I'm like, I'm using a crystal to like detect this. Is there like a friendly user interface for non force sensitives? It's my favorite kind of baby. The Bantha Matriarch, baby. Wow, your Matriarch's a baby, huh? Yeah, I'm like, how do I know it's Obi Wan's forest? Do I, I mean, if I was, if this was real life, I'd walk in and just be like, this smells like old man. So, yeah, probably not the other person. All right, we're back with Vader, though. Hey, dude. He says, Obi-Wan was there, as was another, but who might this other person be? I shall give this much thought. You are dismissed for now. Let me take the chest plate. There we go, everybody. We did it. We got the Imperial Badge of Merit for doing the theme park. Yay. Yep, there it is. You have earned the Imperial Badge of Merit. And we got all of the camo. We got the other TIE pilot survival suit. The black one. Oh, we got the TIE pilot suit. We got the AT, -AT suit. Neat. Uh, we got a full scout trooper camo outfit. Of course, again, this very proud hologram of Darth Vader. Yeah, well, that was interesting. Um, I thought it was really appropriate for a spy. Like I said, or like if you're running a like e evilish Jedi, uh, even though there wasn't much weight to the plots involved, I think Vader, I think the beginning one with the spy and then Vader's probably had the most plot in it. The rest of them were just kind of like busting bases for a little while, which to be fair, I think the Rebel theme park was like that for a lot of it. Both had the same theme, though, at the end is once you start dealing with Luke or Vader, it's kind of transfers into dealing with force sensitive things so that was a shared theme in progression but okay well that's it for the imperial theme park thank you very much everybody